Have you ever wondered where farmers get the seeds they plant to produce the foods that we eat? Sometimes, farmers continue planting seeds saved from the previous crop. However, for some of our most common crops, including corn, onion, spinach, and broccoli, farmers purchase seeds each year. To understand why, let's explore plant genetics using corn as an example. Different genes dictate the sweetness of the kernel, plant height, ear size, and other traits. Different varieties of corn have the same genes. However, they have different versions of those genes, which lead to unique characteristics like color and resistance to pests. Consider the produce in your grocery store. Farmers produce uniform crops so that they can be easily cared for, harvested, and sold to consumers. If all the corn in the field grew at different rates, the plants would vary in their needs for water and nutrients. For this reason, an extraordinary amount of breeding is used to produce uniform varieties that are useful to farmers. These inbred crops take years to produce and are often bred and maintained by seed companies or university researchers. To understand inbreds, let's use an analogy. You can think of genes as playing cards and other suits of the same card as different versions of the same gene. In many plants, as in humans, each individual has two versions of every gene. In inbreds, all genes can be represented by the same suit. For example, one plant might have all hearts and another all spades. Then, if you cross two different inbred plants, the result is a hybrid that is exactly half hearts and half spades. Nearly a hundred years ago, breeders observed that making a hybrid of two inbred varieties results in a new variety that has better characteristics than either parent. These hybrids make great crops for two reasons. They are genetically identical to each other, like twins, and are therefore uniform. And unlike their parents, they have two different versions of every gene, giving them hybrid vigor. This results in favorable characteristics, such as resistance to pests, and higher yields. Now farmers can grow their hybrid crop, harvest, collect seeds, and plant them next season, right? Let's look at what would happen. Each hybrid has one heart version and one spade version of each gene. To produce the next generation, each hybrid parent randomly passes down one version of each gene. The next generation will not be uniform. Some plants will have two heart varieties of a given gene, some will have two spades, and some will have one of each. This means that the farmer's field will have an assortment of plants, some tall, some short, some resistant to pests, some not. This makes for a crop that is difficult for farmers to care for and harvest. So what have we learned about hybrids? Let's recap. Characteristics are controlled by genes which come in different versions, like different suits of the same playing card. Many crops are inbred until each plant has the same version of each gene so that they are genetically identical and can be uniformly cared for and harvested. When these inbred lines are crossed, the resulting hybrid has even better characteristics than either of the parents. This is called hybrid vigor. Farmers often greatly prefer hybrid plants but don't save the seeds that they produce. This is because seeds produced by hybrid crops grow into plants that are not uniform and lack characteristics favored by farmers and consumers. And now you know one reason why farmers choose to buy new seeds each year.